Hi, I'm Dr. Philip McMillan, and thank you very much for joining me. As usual, I am trying to keep you updated with the latest information around the COVID-19 pandemic and what is likely to occur in the near future. Well, for anyone who has been following me, I've always been focused on the fact that severe COVID-19 is an autoimmune disease, a viral mediated autoimmune disease. And as such, I've been able to use that principle and that extrapolation to be able to predict where the pandemic and more critically, where the complications around our actions in the pandemic are likely to occur. And as such, everything I share will be following that line of thinking. And so today I'm sharing with you the unbelievable fact that the first full autopsy on a COVID vaccinated death has just been published. Let me repeat that. The first full autopsy has just been published. Now, think about this. We have delivered about 13 billion doses of a vaccine. A novel virus, a novel vaccine technology and no one is interested in trying to understand what happens at autopsy level. So just to put it in context, autopsy is the equivalent in the context of the financial word of an audit. So big companies have to have their accounts audited and they are then made sure that what they are saying about their company in terms of the financials, in terms of their assets, this is accurate based on an audit. And it's a requirement in the financial world. An autopsy is equivalent in the medical world because it's an objective analysis of exactly what is happening in the body at a histological level. That means using a microscope, first external examination, and then using a microscope to look at the tissues and to see exactly what is happening in the tissues. Without autopsy, you have no audit. You have no idea what is happening. And the principle is simple. You cannot follow the science without autopsy. And so a few months ago, I had the pleasure of speaking to a pathologist, and it's a fascinating discussion. You have to listen to it. The link is, is below. And it was about the fact that I was saying, do we need to mandate autopsies? Because we need to know what's going on. How can we know what is happening if we are not looking objectively as to what is occurring in terms of pathology in the body? Well, it seems as though no one is interested, which is absolutely shocking. So let's look at exactly what has happened. So this is just today that I was looking for this because just about a year ago, just a little bit over a year ago, I did my first series on vaccinated deaths, COVID-19 autopsy review, comparing vaccinated and unvaccinated subjects. And that was the first series, but it was a partial autopsy series. And this is why this one here is a full autopsy. And even that one was fascinating. It was looking at viral dissemination in the vaccinated subjects. I had to wait a year to get the next one. I mean, how do you explain that? So let's get into a little bit of the science around it. And I'm not going to go into too much detail, but I'm just going to give you some overviews of the principles. So this is the case in point. It's published um, just uh, a few, the 9th of January, I wish I had seen it before. It was received on the 30th of November, 2022, and published on the 9th of January, 2023. This was all out of Italy. And you can see the names of all of these people. These are Italians. It's a case report looking at just one case. And critically, as usual, looking at the funding University of Catania in Italy, um, there was uh, informed consent. There was no conflict of interest. So this was just a group of scientists 
who had a patient who died with regards to COVID-19, and I guess similar to myself, they were very interested in exactly what could have happened. Critically, when we look at the paper here, it again says that the present study is the first that analyzes through a complete autopsy and a microscopic analysis of all organs a death related to COVID-19 despite vaccine administration. The first, can you believe that? The first, after 13 billion doses, the first autopsy, complete autopsy has been done in Italy. I say thank you to those scientists because we need more scientists like that who are asking simple questions. Now, let's be frank about this case. This case was in an 83-year-old man. He had significant comorbidities, heart failure, valvular disease, COPD, that's respiratory disease, diabetes, chronic renal failure, and he was admitted with shortness of breath. So what that means is that he was already a sick patient, and it seems as though the infection pushed it over the edge. That's fine, we can understand that, but again, my question is very simple. We know the pathology that occurred with regards to severe disease prior to vaccines, but is it the same mechanism that causes death in somebody who is vaccinated? How could it? Because the immune system should have kicked in. And that's really the question that I had with regards to these cases. So when we look carefully at this case in a little bit more detail, what happened is that this patient first came into hospital, so he had been vaccinated with Pfizer uh, mRNA vaccine, and his initial swab on admission was negative for SARS-CoV-2. But after 11 days of hospitalization, he complained of worsening shortness of breath, okay? That's when they did another swab and they found that he was positive for COVID-19. It's important to note that the time frame of this was around the time of Delta. So this was pre-Omicron that this occurred. So Delta was quite a significant virus in terms of spreading into the lungs. And so it gives us an idea in terms of time frames as to when this occurred. Critically again, he was vaccinated and looking at this here, when they checked for his antibody levels, it was 25.4 AU per mils with a reference value of less than 1.2 being the normal. So it suggests that his levels were probably at least 20 times higher than the reference value. That suggests that he did have an antibody response prior to getting the, um, the infection. More significantly, when they looked carefully at the data, what they found was that he was negative for IgM and he had IgG. In case you didn't know, IgM tends to be the antibody that is produced first in an infection. And then as the body does class switching of antibodies, it then goes to the longer term antibody of IgG. In his case, he didn't have any IgM. He was automatically producing IgG, most likely because of the vaccination. One of the questions that we can't be sure of is, is it possible that he was already positive for COVID-19, even though he had a negative swab? Because he was short of breath, he was in hospital for 11 days, and then he got worse. Could this have been COVID-19 from the start? These are some of the very important questions that we need to try and find out. Uh, they have done uh, an autopsy of his lungs in case you can't tolerate this kind of thing. Yeah, you should look away now. Um, but this is them looking at his whole internal organ, including the lungs up here, and this is the abdominal cavity. And then this is the microscopic examination of the lungs. And there's only one point that I want to highlight in this. And it says the lungs showed areas of chronic emphysema, that's fine, with massive 
interstitial pneumonia. That means that there's inflammation inside the lungs. And then the lungs showed numerous areas of inflammation with interstitial lymphoplasma cell infiltrates. Okay, that's the bit that stood out to me. Well, let's give it a little bit of context here. So I've got here a uh, setup with regards to the immune system in the body. I've used this before, so I hope this makes sense. So I'll just run through it quickly. This is the immune system. This is the stem cell splits into two groups, myeloid and lymphoid. And the myeloid group will produce all of the neutrophils, the macrophages, monocytes, red blood cells, basophils, um, and um, platelets. On the other side, the lymphocytes produce the T cells, the B cells, and the natural killer cells. And the B cells become these plasma cells that produce antibodies. So this is the bit that stood out to me because what it showed is that it showed that there was lympho, lymphocyte with plasma cells infiltrates. I must admit, I'm not a pathologist. And so I was unable to say absolutely clearly as to what that was. But I did do a quick check with regards to what came up when I typed in in Google Scholar, a lymphoplasmacytic um, infiltrate. And interestingly, here's what I found. This was a paper from 2008. Lung involvement in IgG4 related lymphoplasmacytic vasculitis and interstitial fibrosis. These were three cases that they were looking at because they were unusual with high levels of IgG4 positive plasma cells in the lungs. Wow, isn't that coincidental? We have just realized that technically IgG4 is one of the strongest antibody responses in the context of COVID vaccines. These are tolerant antibodies, meaning that they no longer fight the infection. They, they're more likely immune um, modulating than anything else. And it was fascinating that we have such high levels of IgG4 in the context of patients who have been vaccinated. Here we have an unusual pathology, and I'm happy if a pathologist can update us on the details of that, but we have an unusual pathological situation where in the same only full autopsy we've had, they have lymphoplasma cell infiltrates similar to what has occurred in these cases with IgG4 in 2008. Now, how coincidental is that? Whichever way we take it, what it indicates is that the patterns that we are seeing around infection and vaccination, meaning when someone gets an infection after they've been vaccinated, it's like a completely different disease. We need to understand it. There is no other way to understand it than to do autopsies. And it brings back to the important principle there is no evidence of is only relevant if thorough scientific analysis has already been done. And let me tell you, in order to deal with people who keep on talking about that there are no issues, just ask them about autopsies. Because if there are no autopsies, there is no science. Everything is just a thought, an opinion an idea of, without autopsies, looking in detail, just as I've shown you here in this, full, um, in this full paper, looking at a case report from a fully vaccinated subject, without this kind of detail to analyze and to go through, and you can look at it yourself, the links are there, and this is what we need. We don't need only one in someone who has comorbidities. That's just one example of what we can see. We need hundreds, we need thousands. We need to look for patterns. We need to understand what it's likely to mean for the next stages of the pandemic. These are big questions ahead of us. 
and there are no easy answers for anyone. But what we cannot afford to do is put our heads in the sand about the science around what we're seeing. I would insist that everyone puts pressure on those scientific leaders in every country that you're from. Nobody can argue against autopsies because they know that it is the equivalent of an audit in the financial sector. For every situation where we have new technology, new disease, autopsy should become standard, no matter how difficult or how expensive it is. That's my call for today, and that's what I think everyone should, put, would, should push for. I still maintain that it is unacceptable that we've only had one full, complete autopsy after 13 billion vaccine doses. That, to me, from a scientific point of view, is unacceptable. For those who want to keep following the science, please join me on Substack. I'll ask the hard questions and share with you what I come across. Have a good evening.